Let's read together from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I won't forget anything he does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my sicknesses. He saves my life from going down into the grave. His faithful and tender love makes me feel like a king. He satisfies me with the good things I desire. Then I feel young and strong again, just like an eagle. The Lord is tender and kind. He is gracious. He is slow to get angry. And he is full of love. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever asked somebody close to you, please help me not to forget. Help me remember. Have you ever thought about the psychodynamic that you're getting into when you ask a question like that? Why do you do that? What's happening? On what faith is that question based? Well, what you say is, it's important for me to remember, first of all. Uh, it's, it's good to remember. It, it really messes up your life if you can't remember important things. And I know I can forget. That's why I'm asking somebody. There's nothing wrong with me in particular, but um, sometimes I tend to forget. And this is one of those things. I've just got a feeling and it's not going to work out well for me. And there is something that you actually can do to help you to remember. That's what you say. You say you have this incredible, wonderful inner functioning. And, and, and David speaks about, you know, my soul and everything that is within me. There's this thing, memory in me. And that's why he says, I won't forget anything that he did for me. I won't forget. I've watched a movie some time ago about a guy who, who loses his memory every time he goes to bed. And in fact, it's, it's such a symbol of losing consciousness and then losing your memory. And when he wakes up in the morning, he doesn't know who he is, where he is, where to go to, how to do things. And slowly during the day, he recovers his memory. And at the end, he loses it again. And then he, he comes up with a genius uh, plan, uh, effort to recover his memory and to help his memory and to help himself to remember. And he puts up reminders all over the place to help him. And the story eventually, he shapes his memory and he recovers a huge part of his life and he could become who he really was at the end. And for me, it was such a picture of ourselves and of the importance of memory in our lives. A lot of times we don't know who we are. We don't know why we are here and, and, and we forget very important things. And we remember things that we actually wish we could forget, like the trauma of the past. So there's something wrong with our memory. And now the good news is, there's something that we could do with our memory. And this is what this psalm is all about. David tells us um, what he does with his memory and how important it is to shape your memory, what a big difference it would do in your life. And the first thing he says is that actually is that God should be in your memory. You should never forget anything that he does for you. So, so in, in, in today's language, we would say that I, I, I would shape a new kind of consciousness where God, who he is, and what he does for me is at the center of my consciousness. Because that's what the old word in the Hebrew 
actually meant in today's language to remember. It means to live with that consciousness. Now, something could be at the center of your consciousness, and that's where God should be. Something could be a bit off center, but you can easily recall it and bring it back into the center because it lies within your consciousness. But there are some things that are outside of your consciousness. And sometimes it's important things. And you would only discover it through pain and a sickness or whatever. And you realize I knew it, but I wasn't conscious of it. And I've got to live with a bigger consciousness. I've got to include more things in my consciousness. And that's part of human growth is to become more conscious. But your character and your life are actually shaped by the things that lie at the center of your consciousness. And David says it should be God. And, it, and as I said, it, it doesn't mean that you should think about God all the time. You don't think about the people that you live with all the time. But when they're at the house, the house is just different. Then with they, if they're not there, everything feels different in the house because they're not there. And you're conscious of the fact that they are not there, even though you're not consciously thinking about them. Um, if somebody's at the center of your heart and you go on holiday, um, you would think of them often. You know, you wouldn't be able to do anything pertaining to that person and not be reminded of that person. Um, oh, she would love this. I'm going to get this. Um, I'm, I'm going to get this and give it to her when we get back because she would really love this. That's what it means to have something or somebody at the center of your consciousness. Now, here's a strange thing. Why do we forget God? Why do we forget God? Uh, it's very hard for We won't forget our physical needs. We won't forget our addictions. Uh, you don't have to put out reminders. Uh, you, you will remember. But not with God. You can't get addicted to God. You can have a strong desire for God. Very, very strong, intense desire. But it's not addiction. Uh, you can lose it any time. Um, you, you are always free to decide because God decided not to become an object, but to be somebody who, who wants to be in a love relationship with you. And love can never be coercive. It's always got to be something that are free and that you choose not because you have to, but because you want to. So God will always leave you free to choose. You can get addicted to ideas about God and you can get addicted to experiences of God. And the problem is that if we hold on to an experience, an authentic experience, um, there's a danger in it because God's not giving it again. or so He's not giving it, it's not a state that you move in and you live there all the time. It happens then that we try to create experiences of God or recreate the experience of God that we had We've got formulas for it, but it's not actual experiences of God. It's a caricature of an experience. Um, and, and so you're not really busy with God. So you've got to let go of that and be free in this relationship so that um, God can come to you the way he wants to you to. But what's important is that you've got to become aware of the fact that you forget about God, that he moves out, out of the sphere of your consciousness. You get hijacked. We get hijacked by our preoccupation. And sometimes it can be very positive. I'm in the flow. I'm busy creating something. And, and it's, it's, it's actually, it, it borders on a, a semi-trans state. 
it is a, like a, a sleep-like state that you enter. It's a narrowed, focused consciousness. So you are not really open to stimulation when you're at, this, at that place. You're not aware of other things, anything at all, but on the one thing. And it's not an open consciousness. That includes God. You lose consciousness of God. Your worries, your attachments, um, so many things. And it's so important in your life with God to become aware of the fact that you lose consciousness, you forget about Him. To become aware of the, f the moments that now I remember He's back into my consciousness. I remember for years my life revolved around Sundays. It was my favorite day of the week. I've become a Christian and on Sundays I became so aware of God. And I would forget about God. Sometimes still on the, in the church building starting to talk with other people and getting, you know, busy with plans for the day or whatever. And, and I so long for the services and the times that I could be conscious of God. I never knew that God longs to share His life with us. And He wants to live with us in remembrance all the time. And that, that's actually part of our growth, is to shape a new consciousness of God in our lives. We should remember Him. And that's what the law says. Always remember the Lord your God. He gives you strength all the time to live for all the things that you do. Now, the New Testament speaks about it a bit differently than the Old Testament. The Old Testament big words were never forget, remember. Abraham Herschel, the famous uh, Hebrew theologian, said uh, if he could give one word for his Bible, it's uh, the Christian Old Testament, he would say it is the word remember. In the New Testament, Peter says, for instance, your life is a journey. You must travel with a deep consciousness of God. Um, and, and not a lot of translations uses the word consciousness yet. It's a new word, consciousness. But to live in community, you know, to, to experience community with God, you know, at the end of the service, we would say, um, and the community of the Holy Spirit will be with you. That exchange, that conscious connection, and being in touch with the Holy Spirit will be with you. That's a way to talk about it. Uh, one of Paul's favorite phrases is, in Christ. He would say, we are in Christ. What, what does it mean? It means that we are with Him and that we are conscious of Him all the time. Jesus invited His disciples and He said in John 15, abide in me. What does that mean? Well, live with me, be with me, be conscious of me, live in this relationship with me. That's a dialogue, not only a monologue. You don't just ask me, but I'll come to you. I'll give you things. I'll speak to you and stay in my love, Jesus said. Be conscious of the fact that you are in love. Be conscious of the fact that everything that you receive is out of love from God. Now, what David did was he made a list. He thought about his life and he said, well, he's the one that forgives all my sins. Now, look at what he says. I know this is God. So God's actually, he's my savior. He forgives my sins. Now, you won't be very glad about it if you don't know that you are sinful. And if you don't know how your sin affects God and yourself, how you sabotage yourself through the ways that you think and act, you won't be very glad about it. But um, once you have that insight and that conviction that something that the Holy Spirit gives you of our attitude, of our way of thinking in your life, 
are really, really very sinful, you'd be so glad to know He forgives me. He heals all my sicknesses. He's my healer. I got to know Him. I mean, how many times have you been sick? How many times have you been healed? Have you experienced a deep gratitude for your healing? That God healed me, you know, through the medicine, the doctors, or whatever happened in my body. He did it, and I'm thankful. He, he saves me. He, he's my savior. He's my deliverer. Have you ever been at a place where you feel, I don't know what's going to happen to me? It's just everything's going to go south. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go bad. And unexpectedly, new things are starting to emerge. That's God. Do you sense his love? He's my friend. He's my, he's, he's my lover. He's with me. He satisfies my desires. And, and, and in, in the Hebrew, the word there is soul. He satisfies my soul. My nephesh. He, he, uh, uh, do you have problems with your soul? Sometimes you can never be satisfied with anything. Sometimes everything is just, it's just, it, it looks so bad. I feel so bad. I, and I can't, I can't put up my hand on it. I've, I'm living with inner chaos. It just, I have a sense that nothing's coming together within me. I'm living with anxiety and a feeling everything that's bad is going to happen to me. That's my, that, that's the state of my soul. And he comes and he changed it. He satisfies it. He, he heals my soul. And all of this fills me with energy, with power. And I can fly like an eagle. Effortless effort. That's how I can live through God. This is who God is and this is what he does. Now, if you experience this, your experience, can I explain your experience in three very important aspects and components? The first of all is gratitude. Now, what is gratitude? Um, Dallas Willard says, gratitude is seeing the world through the lens of appreciation where one recognizes and responds to God's presence and action in daily life. It's looking at my experience and then through the new glasses that I'm looking at, I, I, I discover God in everything. I realize His goodness. Look at what's happening to me. And this is all God. I, 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 I think so. I believe that. And it's something wonderful that's happening to me. That's gratitude. And the first reaction to gratitude is praise. You, you would say, this is wonderful. I appreciate it. I'm mesmerized. And this is so good. I can only say, thank you, God. You are good. That's praise. And the reason why this happens is love. It's love. It's an experience of actually love. God does these things to me because he loves me. He cares for me. And now I know it. I'm in love. You know, my breath is a gift from God. Every moment, and it's because he loves me. I experience it. So how do we actually do it? We call it the prayer of reflection. It's an ancient way of praying. You start off by asking God to remind you. Because you're going to ref reflect back on a period of time, a day, a week, the year, and you're going to trust the Holy Spirit to bring to your memory the important things that you should remember that God did for you. And you ask yourself the question, what am I really thankful for? When did I feel most alive? When did I experience energy? What was the best moments in this period? Uh, what was something really good that happened to me? And you make a list of it. And then you connect it to God. All of these things that happened. 
It's all God's got his finger in it. And you savor it. Think about it. Use your imagination. Go back. Visualize those moments again. Smell it. Taste it. See it. Relive it. It's so important. Now the impact or the form or the time of your recollection is not as important as to have it often. But to have it often is not as important to that you should have it, at least from time to time. But that is not as important to have the desire to remember and to live in remembrance. We're going to do an exercise now, the prayer of reflection, and we're going to do it together as a community, and Melissa is going to lead us in this exercise. There's a wonderful quote by Paula Darcy, which says, God comes to you disguised as your life. And a way of finding where is God at work in my life is through a prayer of reflection. And today we reflect on 2024, God's work and ask the Spirit to remind us, where did we experience His movements, His grace? It's always there, but moments, that really touched us. So Jacques and Roland, when you think about the year past, past year, what moments stand out for you or excite you? So Melissa, the stories of how the Lord works in people's lives are always something that touches me. And this year we had the privilege to come alongside families and, and young people to, to be witnesses of these stories and um, especially uh, family transitions, thinking of the great ones that goes to school or the great sevens that, that goes to high school or the people that leave school. Um, it's a privilege just to support them and journey with them in this transition that they are part of. And, and also it's remarkable to see young people responding to the movements in their hearts um, when, when there's invitations of working together with the Lord. Um, especially uh, thinking of uh, Antioch, the young adults and student ministry. Uh, they went to Mozambique this year again. And um, just the, the stories we heard, um, we'll, we'll hear a story today as well. But the stories that, that um, or the focus was child abuse and the stories that came out of, of those people that were, were touched um, is, is amazing. And, and, and what, a, what a privilege to be part of the, the movements, but also the, the change uh, around the world. You know, I was moved a few weeks ago with the baptism to see some of these young people. I know, I know them since they went through that transition of grade one to high school, leaving school, but then just seeing this uh, way of expressing their commitment and surrender to God and His will for their lives and watching them go through that process and uh, being a witness to their baptism, that really moved me as well and so thankful. And, and I agree with you, Roland. I mean, someone once said God is in the transformation business, but for us to be witnesses to that and also take hands to support people on their journey where they are at on this journey. And uh, when I reflect back, just to, so thankful. I think, Jacques, it's 1,500 people who have gone on a retreat this year to, to Origins. And just the gift of that place for us uh, in our spirituality and our walk with God and as a family. And then um, 
I think about Lent. Uh, we've been doing the Lent journey for a few years, and it's been a wonderful resource, not only for the Mosaic family, but also we see for other congregations. And um, the one time a year that we say, listen, we're intensifying this journey. We all want to go on it, from the youngsters to the elderly. We adapt that journey for where you are at, but just to see the movement of God in their lives when they say yes. And this year, again, over 20,000 people joining us on that Lent journey through the YouVersion app, PDF downloads, and just deep gratitude um, for that. I think there's a gift, there's a burning bush. God is doing something in our midst with regards to um, nourishment and using, using the content that we create in our teams, um, we just see God's hand in that and just so thankful. It's not because we are great or clever or it's really just God allowing something in our hands to blossom. And we see that with our learning experiences as well. Uh, the fact that we can, after COVID, we learned a lot, that we can host learning experiences online and just see how many people across the country uh, expats in other, other countries joining us, taking hands and learning. Uh, we're very excited about the new uh, project and dream with Friends in Formation, a program where we take hands with the Renovare Institute in America uh, to take people through a year of formation. And I'm um, really excited about what that can mean in leaders in ministry's life. And so thankful that that God uses us in this way as well. Yeah, I'm so grateful for the dimensions of the Mosaic family that God is using to support people on this formational journey. And I, I think of technology, of Ear Mosaic, the online faith community, and how that is makes it possible for us to minister to people from all over the country and over the world. Uh, I felt something of that this year in my own family where my wife had to spend three months in recovery after an accident, how she could stay connected with our journey of faith through technology. Um, I'm grateful for the CakeNet community and for literally thousands of people that join us daily and weekly, and it's part of our community of faith. Mm. Yes, I was speaking to the team a few weeks ago, just saying who would have thought 10 years ago when we said, let's take our Afrikaans online experience and share. And um, to, to think, we, didn't we couldn't have imagined what the impact could be of having our our content and services, worship experiences available seven days a week on CakeNet channel. And just to hear the stories of people who see that, uh, they, they live far away from a church and they see those broadcasts as the place of formation and just so thankful that God uses us in that way and that the word, the good news can be shared in that way across our country. And as we know, there are times in life when we get hurt and when we need support. And I'm so grateful that we are also able to come alongside people where, where there are a place like that. And maybe it starts with a prayer after service or via email or a telephone line, but grateful for support groups, for a team of volunteers that offers pastoral conversations, our um, team of professional therapists, all coming alongside people to help them take that next step to wholeness in their body, mind, and soul. Yeah, and I have a deep appreciation for, for co-workers that share their lives, share their passions and gifts in the body for, for, for ministry. Um, and just thinking of the English community ministry this year, um, mosaic family, uh, community that, that, that evolved, um, hospitality team that, that was created from scratch, no duplication anymore from Afrikaans, and um, group leaders uh, signing up, and um, yeah, just the community getting together and sharing faith with each other. Yes, I think... We can't do what we do with our co-workers. Um, 
and, and being the part of the body of Christ, finding your place, finding your gift and passion and to see how God uses that. And, and you mentioned the other day, uh, it's, it's interesting that there's something that happens inside of the individual who gives or shares their time or resources. And um, it really, it is, it's something to, to experience and witness in someone's life. And I think I'm also so thankful for the Mishio local ministry uh, founded, founded, started in 2020 when we had that dream of finding ministry opportunities in a 20 kilometer radius around Mosaic and inviting people to come and share their time and their resources, their gifts in community projects. And this year, uh, almost 680 volunteers, co-workers taking hands to visit the elderly in, in retirement homes, to uh, serve at the police station and serve the police officers with prayer and whatever is needed, vegetable gardens, prison ministries, and just to see uh, what, what happens when we come together and take hands to do God's work and experience His kingdom coming in our midst, mm. being part of that. Yeah. I think God is calling us, He's blessing us, but to also then be a blessing. And I'm so grateful when I hear the stories of how we can be the hands of and feet of Jesus in our community. Grateful that this year we were able to start our 21st kitchen with the Judea Harvest um, and our 21st kitchen was opened at Olive Oats Bosch, which I'm so grateful. Yes, Joke. I, 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 um, there's something about the, this being faithful in, in giving and in taking hands. I mean, it's been maybe 30 years that we've been uh, taking hands with kitchens, food kitchens and helping. And um, I remember last week, Tian, our navigational leader, sharing that story when he was visiting one of the primary schools in the area where there is a, a food kitchen. And 6.30 in the morning, there's a line of about 500 hungry children waiting to get a meal before school starts. And just so moved. Um, the need is great and it, in my personality, sometimes feels overwhelming. What can we do? But there are 500 children getting a meal, a full tummy so that they can concentrate in class, learn and with hope that the system of poverty can change and that we can play a role in that. And just so moved when he told that story. Yeah, so many years ago, the Word of God came to us as a community of faith, never forget the poor. And it's not always easy to keep on saying yes to that. So this year, we all know, we feel it in our pockets, food inflation sometimes was up to 17%. Challenging, but so grateful for God's provision that we are still able to, to do what He is calling us to do. This year, run about 4.1 million meals 21,000 people per day um, that we could, could feed. And so we started years ago by starting feeding schemes for, for children and for the elderly. And again, I'm so grateful that God is providing for us. Grateful that the way that God uses the expo, the market, as a way of funding these initiatives. Thinking of the 14 babies at the Florida Baby House this year that was given care, support in their formative first years of their life while they wait for their forever families. Mm, sure. Oh, the phrase that comes up is, it's only God. It's only God. It's only He that can, that can do all this um, with the little we have, multiply and just so thankful. And we're thankful for the stories in our family as well. And some stories you will hear in the next few moments as we continue to worship together. The full versions of these testimonies will be available on social media and our website. And just uh, let's take a few moments to thank God for who He is and what He has done, what He's doing and what he will do. And we trust that we will be able to share more of these stories in the years to come. I 
I was going through a very, very difficult time needing somebody else or someone else into the situation. For one of the reasons, as a kind and a tiner and a young person, I had myself not been om to hear from the Heeren. When I came to the internet, in nieuwe platforms het mense alle meer beweeg na een weier bediening. contacted Tareen. She said to me, Bill, what you need to do is the week of guided prayer. I was always going to Mozambique. I was going to go out when I was in school. And God has been able to say that it's perfect and perfect. Before I was given my life for the Lord, 18 months ago, was my life very around on myself. I was thankful for music, which for us online learning also gives us a chance to be able to take a learning experience. En dis wat ek waardeer van Mosaïek ook, hulle het een verskrikkelijke hoeveelheid gemeenskapsofferings. En ek denk die idee daarachter is dat ivers ter jou hart snare sal roer. All of my affection, everything I have to give, some of my attention, is measured in the praise I left. This is how I thank the Lord. Saving me when I was weak, so I will sing. This is how I thank the Lord for everything. This is how I thank the Lord. This is how I thank the Lord for loving me and keeping me. So I will sing. This is how I thank the Lord for everything. This is how I thank the Lord. Al sit ons duisende kilometers ver, soos ek, kan ons deelneem aan aanbidding, kan ons mekaar bedien met Godse woord. I was sitting there and suddenly I just stopped talking. And next to me was this incredible, incredible presence. I had this most amazing peace that just came over me, which I had never really had before. Like I say, I've been a Christian for a long time, but this, was the first experience for me. God will finally now be with us with each other. And in a community of people in their lives, and through their love under each other. He has us formed in our mother's school. He has the plans for us before he was born, before he was born again. And we have so much to be thankful for. Not to see joy in them, to feel Jesus' love, to feel what is in you flowing. En ek denk, betaai keer word ek meer geseen as wat hulle geseen word. I will 
Ek is so dankbaar dat, dat, ek, dat ek kon leer dat hierdie leven nie oor myself gaan nie. Um, dit gaan oor my medemens, wat ek vir my medemens kan beteken. En het laat jou ook verstaan wat jou rol is in sy koninkrijk. En jy verstaan rarig hoe waardevol jy is in dit. I'm in a good place. He's put me in a good place after all these years of battle and struggle and that. He has provided for me. And thank you God for providing for me. My dankbaarheid gaan dat ek kan deel wees van die Jesus story in iemand anders ter sy leven. This is how, this is how I thank the Lord. This is how I thank the Lord. Friends, this is time for our thanks offering now. We do it once a year to bring a thanks offering. Now, some people think that the time of offerings are over. It's an Old Testament idea, but not. A lot of, you know, praise offering, thanks offering, and just offerings is part of the old Jewish tradition that the church just continue doing. In Mark chapter 12, Jesus sat in front of the temple and he looked at people coming to bring their offering. And they had a basket in front of the church, of the temple. And there was a woman who came and she only gave a few cents. And Jesus commented on her giving. Now, most probably, those offering went for the upkeep of the temple. It was not um, you weren't obliged to give it. It wasn't, it wasn't part of the law, like tithes were part of the law. Everybody had to do it. So the interesting thing about the story is we don't know exactly why she gave that money. But the way that she did it and the spirit that she did it with impressed Jesus. He could see it. She gave so much out of her income. It's, it's an act of dependence upon God. It's an it's a act of faith. It's an act of gratitude. And Jesus said, well, why, why don't you do it this way? This is how you should do it. Like this woman did it. And we are inviting everybody to give something out of gratitude for what God has done for you. And if you haven't done anything, start somewhere. Give something and see what it does to you and what God does for you through this. Let's pray together. We thank you, Father, for this period of time that we could have spent together just in thanksgiving and connecting again and developing the eyes to find you in everything in our lives and to see and to taste your goodness again. We thank you for that, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.